Aurora TV. The world is thinking. Wow. Now, excavating close to the entrance of uh, the cave at Liang Bois in the year 2003, the archaeologists um, uncovered the remains of at least six and possibly as many as 12 hominid individuals of this uh, new kind. And while most of the handful of fossil individuals known from Liang Boa were represented only by single bones or teeth or just a few pieces, among them was a pretty uh, complete skeleton that received the, uh, uh, the uh, rather unimaginative identifier of LB1, which is probably one reason why the informal moniker of the Hobbit uh, caught on uh, so quickly. But LB1 itself was amazing. It was absolutely unlike anything anybody had ever seen before. And nobody could have imagined this thing. Um, now, in life, this uh, tiny individual, now thought to have uh, been a female, uh, had stood not much more than three feet tall. And here she is in reconstruction compared with uh, a modern woman. And what's more, uh, the skull of this individual had contained a brain that was no bigger than that of a chimpanzee, which to say it was only about a third of the size of our own brains. And on the left here, oh, I'm sorry, we've gone too far. There we go. On the left here is an electronically produced image of the inside of LB1's brain case, which is basically what we can take to uh, uh, the, the, the uh, external uh, appearance of the brain itself was. And it's compared with a brain cast of Homo erectus that's seen on the right here. And you can see there's an enormous uh, size difference. The Homo erectus brain is well over twice the size of the hobbits, even though it's still not much more than half the size of ours. Now, the particular combination of features that we see in LB1 might not have been as surprising as they are if the hobbit had been discovered at, for example, a three million year old site uh, in Africa. Because after all, that long time ago, three million years ago, all hominids were African. All of them were small body, and all had very archaic limb proportions and small brains, which happens to be a good general description of the hobbit as well. And here's a fabulous reconstruction of uh, LB1 by the paleo artist Elizabeth Danes, which shows all of those general features that I just described. But of course, in the time that's passed since three million years ago, there's been a huge amount of evolutionary water under the hominid bridge, as it were. And all hominids from later times that we knew of departed hugely from the ancient African template. So imagine how amazing it was when dating of the deposits at Liang Bua showed that these strange hominids had lived there incredibly recently. The oldest hobbit bones found in the cave were well under 100,000 years old, and the youngest of them were a mere 17,000 years old. And the LB1 skeleton itself was that of an individual who had lived just 18,000 years ago, which was well after both Homo erectus had become extinct in Asia and Homo neanderthalensis had become extinct in Europe. So looking at the bones or Elizabeth's uh, reconstruction of the living creature, you'd never have guessed that this peculiar individual had lived such a short time ago. So how do we explain this anomaly of time versus morphology, time versus anatomy? 